BMW is not really known for having uh, simple names for their cars and it got a little bit more uh, complicated now with the 2024 BMW X5 which BMW has updated for this year. And we're going to have a look at what's exactly new here. It got more power and it also got a new name. I reviewed the X-Drive 40i, which is the base X5 in 2023. And I was surprised at just how quick that, uh, that, that SUV was for a base model. And now we have even more power. So we're going to have a look at what is new from the tech and spec. And then I want to show you the design and let you know why I prefer the previous generation X5 when it comes to the exterior design over this one, even though this is pretty good looking still. Let's have a look at this article from Car and Driver, linked down below in the description as always. 2024 BMW X5 xDrive 50e brings higher numbers all around. The plug-in hybrid SUV is more compelling than ever, but also, of course, that comes with a price. The addition of a 48 volt hybrid system means the standard six cylinder X5 and the V8 and the X5M are technically all hybrids now and i love this setup it's such a smooth setup you get better fuel economy more torque from lower rpms and it just feels a lot more powerful when you add this uh, electric motor onto this powertrain it's just a fantastic car to drive the x5 you have the electric motor which is integrated into the transmission housing and also more muscular than before and is good for 194 horsepower which is 83 horsepower more than before and that is a pretty huge number specifically for electric you know torque power you're definitely going to feel that so the new grand total is 483 horsepower and the to total torque is up as well to 516 pound feet not bad at all the BMW X5 plug-in hybrid trades its former xDrive 45e designation for xDrive 50e and to avoid confusion which is pretty hard here the V8 version uh, ratchets up from M50i xDrive to M60i xDrive and uh, pretty much every single BMW X5 comes with all-wheel drive except for the very very base model sDrive 40i which I assume is still in uh, in the lineup for 2024. You also have an EV range of 38 miles now instead of 30 miles, which I think again is great because if you just want to go for a, a you know, go to the grocery store or something like that really quick, you might not want to use any fuel. I think that's a good range for this type of vehicle. You also have a faster charging rate for the battery. Now this is where it gets nuts. BMW, this is not a, you know, a small SUV. It's a pretty large uh, piece of machine and it go does 0 to 60 now under 4 seconds. So 3.9 seconds or 4.6 seconds from a rolling 5 uh, miles per hour start. Now I'm a little bit confused here. Maybe you can help me out because I don't understand this. It says 0 to 60 from I guess standstill in 3.9 seconds and from a rolling start it takes longer to me it doesn't make sense i'm probably reading this wrong or something however the previous one did 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds so it's a huge improvement in 0 to 60 timing mean, could you imagine like 10 yeah just 10 years ago saying that a bmw x5 pretty much the base model i assume this is will go 0 to 60 in 3.9 under 4 seconds we are definitely going to talk about this interior as well in photoshop so in ev mode you can go up to 87 miles per hour which is totally fine i don't think uh, a lot of us do more than 87 miles per hour in our in our day-to-day -day driving this is what i love about the x5 you have optional 21 inch wheels and run flat tires so you have 21 both in the front and in the rear as well. So thank you BMW for putting the same size wheels all around the car. I know this is not an M car. They usually do the staggered setup on the M cars. Now looking at this interior here. So the big cabin change for 2024 is a revamped infotainment system. You can see that up here. It's pretty huge. So you have a 14.9 inch touchscreen, which is this one right here and a 12.3 inch digital instrument uh, cluster under a single slightly curved display. The display itself, I don't have any problems with that. I do have a problem, as I've said so many times before, and in my in-person reviews as well, with the integration, because here you can see this bracket, and it just doesn't feel premium. It doesn't feel BMW to me to have a visible bracket like this and just slap a screen onto the dash. Uh, you do have the climate control buttons now integrated down here 
in, in the screen itself, in the software, instead of having them down here like we used to have in the previous generation X5. Here are the new taillights, uh, looking pretty dynamic. We're going to talk more about this uh, later as well. And it would hardly be a mid-cycle refresh without tweaks to the headlights, the taillights, the lower fascia, and the grill. So the 2024 X5 gets all of those. And you now can pay $850 to have the grill light up when you open the doors, just like you have in the BMW XM, for example. Now, the pricing here with this new power, the new technology is going to jump a little bit, uh, roughly 10%. The base, I assume this is, the base hybrid starts at $73,495, which is $7,000 more than... Um, last year and that's a pretty steep uh, bump for the base model and then you have the v8 starting at just over ninety thousand dollars which is up four grand from last year so with that said let's jump into photoshop here let's have let me show you why i do prefer the old generation of the x5 over the new one I, as i said the new one also comes with uh, two different completely different fascias you have the m sport package which this one is not this is the normal X5, the non-sport package, and then you have the M Sport package that kind of connects the grill down here and turn it into some sort of black mouth down here at the bottom. And I'm really not sure which one of these I prefer, the non-M Sport or the M Sport package. I think both of them can be improved uh, quite a bit. But up top we do have the, I do believe this came out in 2019. Now the reason why I think the uh, previous generation X5 is much better looking, it just has all the connection to it. The, the graphics up top Top. For example, this, we have a clear separation, first of all, with the bumper here, which is nice. It looks, uh, you know, more traditional than, than the new one. And it also has these sections down here with the chamfers housing everything in a very nice, beautiful way. I also do like that the headlights sit more horizontal than what they do in the new one. They sit a little bit more upright. And I think the biggest difference that, that makes me prefer the previous one is just this lower section where all the elements is exactly where you expect them to be. And we have a connection to the chamfers up top and the chamfers down low, which we don't really have in the new one because this down here looks very static this silver piece not sure first of all why it is silver it kind of clashes a lot with everything else and then we have another piece here a uh, graphic detail that goes on the side which i don't really mind i think that is a good idea to put two vents on the very far ends of the front fascia creating a nice framing for it for the bottom part we still sort of have a bumper separation here like we had in the previous generation as well but it just feels like this top part here the top section 50 percent feels more fluid more organic and then could you come down to the lower section and everything becomes a lot more static and industrial jumping into the side view and here there were really not a lot Lot of differences in this design because this is as you know just a facelift a re mid-cycle refresh of the x5 we still have this beautiful x5 shoulder line and this is where you can separate the x7 from the x5 the X5 being the smaller sibling of the X7 means you can have a little bit more styling, a little bit more curvatures, and we do have that in this design. I think the side view is a super tight, beautiful side view for an SUV. Clean BMW proportions. We even have the Hofmeister kink intact in this area, and we have this line at the bottom cutting into the uh, rear bumper here as well, having some line flow to it. And as I said, it's not really a lot of big differences for the 2024 model year. I do love the wheels. I definitely prefer the new wheels over the 2023 model year. These look very nice, super clean design. It's complex and simple at the same time. And I think that goes hand in hand with what's going on in the rest of the 2024 X5. The taillight here as well has the same housing for it, but the internal pieces that I'm going to show you in a minute uh, are different. So the LEDs are brand new for 2024. And this this is again this silver details that are coming back like we had in the front view coming back here in the side and this is another detail that I don't feel suits to be positioned in that specific area I much rather have it be clean like this with just a plastic piece like this and no silver framing for it going around it like we have in the 2024 but overall the proportions are just spot on proportions is something that BMW has been masters at for a very long time and that goes for this x5 as well now looking at the rear view before jump in and have a look at the interior this is by far the best view in my opinion for the new x5 and i don't really mind the new leds that we have here because i think they add some more personality than what we had in the older generation the the 2023 generation up here even though this looked very nice because you see the led here it follows the exact outline 
of the, uh, the, the, the taillight itself. And we also have some dynamic features here in the LEDs, big juicy LED right here on the side, coming into a more uh, thinner piece uh, right here in, in this area, the further to the center we go. And this chamfer up top is also a beautiful little touch because as you know, I love chamfers in car design. I don't know why that is, but I just think it adds some, um, it, it separates it a little bit more from the product design feel to have chamfers around the key features and the key graphics in the car. And this is a big, beautiful chamfer right here. You have another line going at the bottom. Dual exhaust at the very bottom with a sort of diffuser diaper here because we have this being body colored and having no connection to the rest of the piece that is body colored. So it just sits down here by itself. I probably would want to have that be black and not have it be a diff diffuser diaper like we have right there. Now, looking at the new 2024 facelift, we still have the same outline for the taillight, even though the internal pieces are completely brand new. So we have this aero design now almost like a Volvo Thor's hammer design with a split centerpiece here this black piece splits these two graphic features but I still think it has this dynamic feel to it It looks a lot more dynamic than than the front end where I think these pieces look super static very industrial and static they don't have any different um, thickness to it and they don't have any radiuses to the LEDs but when we come into the rear end you can definitely see that we have a much thicker piece here and then thinner pieces as we go closer to the center of the car other than that it's pretty Pretty much still the same as we have in 2023 with these lines intact and we also have a dual diffuser diaper at the bottom we have a silver one down here with the uh, body colored piece up top an island within an island last but not least looking at this interior and uh, quickly just want to mention that uh, we do have the physical buttons here on the 2023 model year and i think as you've heard 10,000 times before, this integration of the uh, interior in general just looks so much more classy and homey, cozy than the current generation because we do have the housing here, still a digital screen, which is totally fine, still a much better integration of the infotainment screen than what we have in the 2024 model year, whereas as you can see, we don't have the buttons down here anymore as we had in the 2023. Instead, they've moved up to the infotainment screen and we don't have any sort of integration of these two screens. Instead, the just a, a TV on the dash these days. Still a very nice interior. I did like this interior when I reviewed it. The only thing I would like to change is the integration of the infotainment screen and the gauge cluster into the dash to be more fluid and more in line with everything else that goes on in the interior.